Grace and peace, I'm Brian Musser, the Baptist Campus Minister at Drexel University, and this is Peace and Power Christian Fellowship, the peace of Jesus Christ to change our lives, the power of the Holy Spirit to change our world. And we are continuing our series on the reality of worship, what we do when we worship God. This is the third lesson in that series, and we're looking at worship in the Old Testament, worshiping the God who is with us. And as we do that, we are on the second part of this third lesson, and we're going to be looking at God as our deliverer. Now, Deuteronomy states that we should love God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your might. Um, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, and when you lie down and when you rise up. So this idea of worshiping God or expressing our love for God or expressing our value of God through, you know, our heart and our choices, our soul, our feelings and affections and our strength and what we do, these ideas that we have for God, how we express them through worship. That is what the ancient nation of Israel was called to do, to love God, to worship God in both inside in the mental and outside in the active sort of thing. But later on in that same chapter, when asked why, why do you worship God? That is expressed clearly. When your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules that are that the Lord our God has commanded you? So why do we do this? Why do we love God with all of our hearts? Why do we worship God this way? Why do we live in this worshipful engagement with God? Verse 21 says, Then you shall say to your son, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous, against Egypt and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God, for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. So this idea of why do we worship God this way revolves around the fact that God delivered them from Egypt. So the worship of God is always attached in the Old Testament to the actions of God. We come to know God and we come to worship God for what he has done. And there's always this historical event that connects the worship of God. The ancient nation of Israel worshiped God because he delivered them from slavery. Praise the God who delivered us. The primary identity of the nation of Israel, the people of Yahweh, the people of God, the people of the Lord, was that that of a people delivered from slavery in Egypt in Egypt and given the promised land. Just like the church is a people delivered from slavery to sin, the nation of Israel were a people delivered from slavery in Egypt. Their worship of Yahweh was rooted in the historical event of their deliverance from Egypt. And the Passover is a feast that celebrates God's deliverance from from Egypt. So, The people worshiped God because God delivered them. God made them a people who worships worships God through the deliverance that he granted them. Everything about the worship of the people of Israel revolved around the historical event uh, that created the people of Israel. And the church is the same. It's the same kind of connection today. The life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and the salvation available to us through that is 
the historical event is the, the moment that creates the people and the reason why the people worship God. So looking at this, this is another worship song in the Old Testament. This comes from Exodus, and this is immediately after the Exodus and immediately after God claims victory over the armies of Pharaoh in the book of Exodus. And this is called the Song of Moses. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The rider and his, uh, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glorious deeds, doing wonders? You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. Till your people, O Lord, pass by, till the people pass by whom you have purchased, you will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. So we looked in the first part about how the creation, God's actions in creation are quite often used in the Israelites' worship in the Psalms. Also, the deliverance, the act of deliverance from slavery in Egypt, the exodus, is that establishing event that also is why the Israelites worship God in song. So those two pieces, the creation and the exodus, are pieces of the worship of God for what God has done. And so much of the worship in the Old Testament is a very practical worship. We worship God because of what God has done. And that is how worship in the New Testament is connected to this as well. We worship God through because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and what that has done for us as well. So, so this idea is the worship of God connects directly back to the event of the Exodus. Some questions. Tell us how God is part of your story or history. Worship God through how God has infiltrated your story. How do you celebrate or remember God's deliverance in your life? And in what ways does the church corporately celebrate our deliverance? So just looking at those questions, would love to hear comments from you. Drop down in the comment section. Give me a response. As always, there are three ways to join this conversation in person. Sunday nights at 5 p.m. in the gym at Live. Monday nights 7 p.m. via Zoom. And these weekly wrap-ups on YouTube and or WordPress. I'm all over the social media, Instagram, TikTok, WordPress, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow as appropriate. I enjoyed having this conversation with you. Hopefully it continues real soon.